Hey guys, so I've got a new tutorial for you today and this is going to be about creating an actual survival system. So if you've ever seen DayZ and, um, you know, WarZ and stuff like that, um, they all have a sort of survival system where you have to, you know, you keep yourself alive by either, you know, eating or drinking or something like that. Now this is going to be quite similar to another tutorial that I actually made and that was about actually creating, you know, like an RPG sort of system where you used mana and you could sprint and you had health but this is going to um, revolve around health um, thirst and hunger so it's going to be very similar in sort of like the scripting and the basics but in a way it's just showing you how you can create a similar thing but using different elements to make different GUIs for your game which you know in turn can you know make it a lot more realistic so what I've got in my scene is my first person controller. I've got my just my test scene here. I've got two boxes, blue and green. They're just to represent food and water. Um, and they've just got a material on them, so nothing, nothing fancy at all. So, as we always start off, we need to do actually write a script. So if we create a new JavaScript, and then we actually call this GUI Survival, and then what we'll do is open that up in Mono Develop. Once that's open, I would delete the two functions then we're gonna write about um, seven variables but if you looked at my other tutorial you'll probably know what's coming up so what we're gonna do is gonna try and hold health thirst and hunger so what we'll do is write variable current health and as flow set it equal to 100 and then I'll have a variable called max health and set that to the integer and make it equal to 100. But actually, I'll just put, because this is a flaw, I'll put point 0.0 on it just to make things easier. Then I'll copy those two and just paste them in. So we've got another two of the same. Then we'll change the second one to current thirst and the other one below, change it to max thirst and then the one below that current hunger and max hunger and you leave all the values the same and then we'll just create a private variable called bar length and have that equals 0, 0 0.0 then what we need to do is we need to write so start function so function start put the brackets in add the two semicolons and say bar length is equal to screen make sure it's a capital dot width divided by eight now you know you can change this up depending on what the size of your screen is to where you want to position your GUI but for the sake of this is that's as, um, where it's going to be and then what we'll do before we start writing the update function we'll just write the GUI so it can appear so we'll write function on GUI then two brackets, two curly brackets, we'll put icons as a comment and then I'll say gy.box open brackets, new rect make sure that is a capital, then open brackets, say 5, comma 30, comma 50, comma 23 then close the brackets, put a comma, and then we'll say in quotes health close that put a semicolon then what I'm going to do copy this line paste that in twice and then we'll say 30 but we'll say 55 and we'll actually say 80 and then we keep the rest the same except we'll change health to thirst and this bottom health to hunger now we'll put here health hunger thirst bars and then under here what we're going to do is going to do the similar thing gui.box open brackets new rect then we'll say 55 comma 30 comma bar length comma 23 then we'll close that off put a comma then we'll say current health dot to string so we've both capitals there, open brackets, put a quote, put zero, end the quote, and put the bracket, then say plus, quote, slash, quote, plus, max health. 
close that bracket, put a semicolon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this line, paste it in twice, and then we'll say just as like before, we'll change this one to 55, this one to 80, and then we'll say current thirst to string, and then current hunger to string, and then we'll change max health there to max thirst and then the bottom one to max hunger so all these GUIs mean their little um, icon to say hunger thirst and um, health and then these are drawing the actual bars that we're going to create and what we have to do current health dot two string means that it converts current health from a float so a, you know a decimal value to a whole number so we can actually see it as a whole number now if we go back into unity and add this to the first person controller you'll notice that now we've got health thirst and hunger out of a hundred <coughs> and so we need to do the sort of nitty gritty of the script now so what we're going to do is under here we'll say function update then we'll put the two brackets then the two curly brackets and say I'll just write in here with my um, comment and say thirst control section just so we know what we're doing and then I'll write normal thirst uh, degradation so as it goes down so what we're going to do if and then we'll say in brackets current thirst is greater than or equal to zero then we'll close the bracket and we'll add two curly brackets and then say current th oops current thirst is minus equal time dot delta time divided by two put a semicolon and now from here what we'll do under here is we'll say if current thirst is less than or equal to zero then we'll add two curly brackets under there and say current thirst is equal to zero then one more under here then if current thirst is greater than or equal to max thirst close the brackets add two curly brackets under there then current thirst is equal to max thirst and then add the semicolon then that's all okay for now we'll copy this line here and we'll just paste it in and we'll say hunger control section what we'll do is we'll copy all of these exactly from the, how they are above paste them in and what we'll do in the hunger we'll just change each of these so what I'll do is I'll copy hunger there paste it 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 here here and here so everywhere you had thirst under the hunger control section you've changed it to hunger now so it does everything that thirst does so it actually counts down at a certain t um, amount we'll actually do divided by four for hunger so it doesn't actually go down as much as thirst now under here we'll copy this same line again just so we keep everything um, you know under wraps we'll say damage control section so this is where you will actually get damaged and it will do um, damage to your health so under here we'll say that if current hunger is less than or equal to zero and and open brackets current thirst is less than or equal to zero then we'll close the close two brackets here should I say make sure it's two and then we'll add two curly brackets and say in the curly brackets we'll say current health minus equals um, time dot delta time divided by two add a semicolon then under here we'll say else we'll add two curly curly brackets and say that if current hunger is 
less than or equal to zero, then what we're going to do next to your Z key and opposite your sh and next to your shift, there's like a line that you could do if you hold shift and tap it in, you'll make two lines, and this means either or. So once you've had that in, we can add current thirst, and then we can say that is less than or equal to zero. We'll add the um, close brackets. We'll add two curly brackets in there and say that current health minus equals time dot delta time divided by 4 so what this essentially means, this section it means that if hunger and thirst are both at zero it'll count down you know fairly quickly but if either of one of the two is at zero it'll count down more slowly so only when they're both at zero it'll count down more quickly now for both the hunger and the thirst you'll notice that you know um, you can't go above the max amount because it always sets it to the max amount you can't go below zero because it always sets it to zero and your thirst and your hunger count down by um, separate amounts because you would most likely die of dehydration before you do of hunger so that's all done now and um, it's on the FPS controller and when we play the game now you'll notice that thirst and hunger both go down and that if we set um, current thirst to th we'll say th 3 and then current hunger to 3 you'll notice that when I press play they both count down, thirst will count down slightly quicker and when it gets to 0 um, your health will start counting down by the rate which hunger counted down and when they're both at zero it'll count down slightly quicker and it can all be changed dependent on what values you add so in here if you actually change this to just time dot delta time it would do it every normal second if you did it times by ten it'd do it every second times by ten so it'd almost make it go down one every um, ten uh, units every one second so it just depends on what speed you want so divide it or times it depending on how quick you like it to be so what we're going to do now is going to actually be able to adjust these um, values we get so that when you um, pick up an object your thirst and hunger can go back up so food and water so we'll create a new javascript file and call this water now we'll just make water for now because food will be very very similar now what I'm going to do is actually add a private variable and call this survival script and then I'll set it as type GUI survival with a semicolon then I will put this under the start function and say that survival script is equal to game object dot find open brackets open quotes first person controller and then say dot get component open brackets GUI survival and then cause that brackets add a semicolon then I will delete the update function and say that function on trigger enter open the brackets and put call colon collider then close the brackets add two curly brackets and then we'll say if call dot tag is equal to um, quotes player close that up and add two curly brackets underneath we'll say destroy open brackets game object lowercase and then add the semicolon then we'll say survival script dot current thirst plus equals 10 now that's just for water so what we'll do we'll go back into unity and then say for water we'll duplicate that and rename that to food and then if I open food up in mono develop what I'll do is change only one thing to current hunger so we'll click save and then what we'll do we'll add um, to the water collider we'll add the water script and to the food one we'll add food and you need to make sure that both got is trigger as set to the collider so if we press play you'll notice that they're both going down and before we lose you know any health we'll go back up to 10 and then they'll go by 10
So both of the values go up to keep yourself alive. Um, and that just shows you know a quick and simple easy way that you know when stuff um, when you create something with GUIs it can actually spread across many different elements and you can actually make it to suit your game. Now I'll just show you quickly that in the GUI survival that what we want to do is that we'll do this at the top just for instance we'll say that if um, current health ever is less than or equal to zero then we actually want to do something so obviously the character would die or you want to respawn or do something then we'll actually say that um, we'll write a new function called character death close the brackets and add um, you know semicolon so here what we can do before the GUI we can say function character death um, and then we'll add the character death with two brackets we'll add two curly brackets underneath and then we'll say um, application dot load level open brackets and then we'll put in a level that we want to say death level so this might bring up say a GUI or uh, something like that in another scene which says you know you died and then you can have a button that says respawn so realistically that just shows that you know when your character dies you can actually do something it doesn't mean something to your game so it's about keeping them alive or you will fail so that's pretty much it for this tutorial and hopefully it helped you out and helped you know do something you know more dynamic to your game and as ever thanks very much for watching and if you like the tutorial don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers